This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Uh, we're going to go through question four of the paper F5 June 2012 exam. So make sure you've got the question in front of you. And let's have a look at the requirements quickly. Uh, part A, require a statement which reconciles budgeted contribution to actual contribution in as much detail as possible. Do not calculate sales price and labour rate variances since both of these have a value of nil. 12 marks. Oh, we'll look at the um, information above shortly, but that uh, that seems to be um, a fairly normal uh, basic variances question. Part B, discuss the view that there's no longer a place for standard costing if TQM is introduced. Well, that's obviously eight marks writing. We'll, we'll have a think about that when we get to it. But let's make a start on part A. Um, we're going to reconcile budget to actual contribution. Um, they've given us a cost card. The um, standard cost there, it's marginal costing. The standard cost is 36 at the selling price 80. Uh, a junior member of the accounts team has produced the following variance statement. Well, it should be uh, immediately obvious where they've gone wrong, that to get their variances, they've compared budget with actual. And yet, uh, uh, certainly as far as the costs are concerned, we should be comparing actual with the flex budget. If we only produce 960 units against budget 1,000, then we'd expect the cost to be lower uh, it's rather silly to compare actual costs with original budget costs. They've told us below how much material was used and how many hours of labour there were. And then, now this is interesting, until now Locke had a market share of 25%. In the month of May, however, the market faced an unexpected 10% decline. Now the relevance of that surely is that if the market faced a decline, then we'd expect to sell less. And so, um, we need when we look at the sales volume, um, we budget on a thousand. We only sold nine sixty. Well, we would expect to have sold ten percent less, and then we'll compare what we actually sold with what we now expect to have sold. Uh, it's effectively planning an operational. Anyway, let's have a go. First of all, what's the budget contribution? Yeah, they have helped us. I mean, we could have worked it out ourselves, but they have told us in the um, the budget column of that second table, the budget contribution was 44,000. Or, of course, just it's nice to have a double check, the original budget, it was 1,000 units. The contribution per unit is the selling price. So from the top table, the selling price is 80 minus the marginal cost, 36. And so 44 a unit, again, 44,000. Let's look at the sales volume variance. Now, we did sell fewer units. It was 960 is against a budget of 1,000, so we'll expect less contribution. But because of that last line, we're going to split it. As I said a moment ago, first of all, if the market fell by 10%, we'd expect to fall by 10%. And so, how much, how, how much would we have lost due to that? So, fall in market, since we budgeted on 1,000, if there's a 10% fall, we'd expect to lose sales of 100 units. And at standard contribution, which we just spoke about, of 44, we'd expect to lose 4,400. That's adverse. That effectively is our planning variance. However, that would have brought us down to 900. We actually sold 960. So we gain 60 units, and that must mean we've had a gain in market share. Uh, 
uh, and at $44 a unit contribution, standard contribution, that would have gained us 2640. So we've lost on uh, as a result of the market falling, but we've gained on market share. And that's useful information, even though here we're not asked to comment on it. Uh, but that means that at that stage we'd be expecting a contribution of 42,240. So why is the actual contribution going to be different? Well, because of the cost variances. So let's work through um, standard workings. Uh, first of all, materials. Um, and the, first of all, the materials expenditure variance. We'll take what we paid, so the actual cost was from the uh, middle column of the second table. The actual cost was 11,126. We'll compare um, with our actual purchases at standard cost. What should they have cost? Well, we know below the table how many kilos we bought. 3648. The standard cost per kilo from the top table. Materials 4 kilos at $3 a kilo. So we should have spent uh, 10,944. We spent 11,126. So the variance is 182 and it's adverse. We spent more than we should have. That's the expenditure variance. What about the usage variance? Uh, the actual usage. In kilos, uh, again, 3648. How much should we have used the standard usage for the actual production? Um, we actually produce 960 units. From the cost card, each unit should take 4 kilos. So 960, 4 kilos a unit, is 3840. So we used less, we saved 192 kilos. And we cost out at standard cost, again, $3 per kilo. So the variance, 576. Um, and again, favourable, we use less material than we'd have expected. So that's materials. Let's turn to labour. Now the question specifically says uh, not to calculate labour va rate variance because it's zero. We're not going to waste time checking. So it's simply the efficiency variance. And to check the efficiency, uh, we'll take the actual hours we worked. Uh, how many was it? Uh, below the table, 1824 hours. Compare with the hours we should have worked, the standard hours for the actual production. So we produced 960 units from the cost card. Each unit should have taken two hours. A total of 1920. So we were faster. We've gained. We gained 96 hours. Cost out at standard cost of ten dollars. We saved 960. It's favourable. Finally, the variable overheads. Uh, 
uh, the expenditure or the rate variance, first of all. Now remember, we can tell from the cost card, the overheads are being charged on an hourly basis. So we'll compare uh, how much we actually spent from the middle table, uh, where are we? Variable overheads, 3283. Uh, we'll compare what we should have paid for the actual hours. So actual hours at standard cost. So the actual hours we worked were 18.24. The standard cost per hour for labor is two. Uh, sorry, for variable overheads is two dollars. A total of three six four eight. And so we've saved money. Another favorable variance. This time, three, six, five. Uh, finally, uh, the efficiency variance. Now, we can, in fact, almost write the answer straight down, but since, since she does say clearly show all of the workings, we'd better um, show them. Uh, but the reason we could write it almost straight down is because it's based on labor hours. It's exactly the same workings as for labor. So I won't waste time. Actual hours, 1824. I'm just copying what we have above. Standard hours for the actual production, 1920. We've saved 96 hours. The only difference from labor is whereas labor was $10 an hour, variable overheads are charged at $2 an hour. Which is what? Ah, 192. Uh, and again, favourable. Well, there we are. Uh, we might, uh, let's just add up and finish the statement and let's hope it works. Uh, we've got uh, the contribution as far as 42 to 40. Add and subtract the variances. So minus 182 plus 576. Plus 960, plus 365, plus 192, comes to 44151. That should be, and it is, the actual contribution. So it does check, which is quite nice. If it didn't check in the exam, then for heaven's sake, don't at this stage waste time going back through all your arithmetic. In all probability, it's just one silly mistake somewhere. Uh, make sure you've written something for part B. And if there's still time left, then you can go back, um, if there is an error, and try and find it. But do write something for part B. It's, it's a bit of an odd part B. It's something that, um, in the past, I wouldn't have expected um, people to concentrate on. And so I'm not going to, in fact, write a full answer. You can read um, the examiner's answer yourself. But let me stress the things you should be after. The production director at Locke believes that the way to persistently increase market share in the long term is to focus on quality. And he's probably right. He's hoping to introduce a total quality management approach. The finance director also shares this view and has said that standard costing will no longer have a place within the organization if TQM is introduced. Now, to write an answer uh, as long as the examiner's answer, you really need to understand total quality management um, fairly well. But remember, she's never expecting an answer uh, as long as hers. The examiner's answers to written parts are always longer because they know people learn from them. And also, even if you'd never heard of total quality management, you should be able to write a few things. Uh, the main thing being <coughs> that TQM focuses on quality I think that's fairly obvious, as I say, even if you've not heard the expression. 
but it makes it clear we it focuses on quality rather than on costs. Um, we're not saying costs aren't important, but the main focus is quality. We want to increase market share. Um, however, standard costing and variance analysis they're focusing on the numbers. Specifically, the uh, particularly rather the costs. So there are two points worth making. A third point with standard costing. There are ways it can be approached, but generally speaking, at the beginning of the year. Um, we calculate, we estimate what the costs are going to be, and that's then rather fixed for the year. Every month we calculate our variances against those standard costs. However, with total quality, um, total quality management, if we're always trying to improve quality, um, for instance, reducing waste, then there's, in a sense, no such thing as a standard cost. We're always trying to reduce waste, uh, produce more, uh, produce faster, more efficiently, um, the standard costs will keep changing. And so there's a second point to make. Um, TQM um, attempts to continually improve quality. And appreciate quality isn't just producing um, what you might call perfect uh, goods, but there's quality in the way we work. For example, reduce waste. And as a result of that, uh, the standard cost would keep changing. Perhaps I've not worded that too well. In a sense, there is no standard cost. Hopefully, we're forever improving things. Uh, and the final main point uh, to make, and the only other real point that she makes, excuse me, <coughs> um, is that with TQM, the whole organisation is trying to improve quality. It's, 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 it's an organisation-wide uh, philosophy, whereas with uh, standard costing and variance analysis, we're looking very much at each separate area. Oh, we've saved on materials, or we've overspent on labour, and so on. So that's another what you might call general point to make: that TQM um, is a company-wide philosophy. to improve quality. Where a standard costing and variance analysis uh, are looking at each area of the business separately. So, I hope I'm making sense, but they're the main points um, that she would have been after. Um, finally, it's nice to have a conclusion. It says, discuss that there's no longer a place for standard costing. Well, to say there's no place for it is perhaps a bit extreme, but certainly the introduction of TQM uh, will make it um, certainly more difficult
and less relevant. Uh, to use standard costing. Okay, there we are.